Hello, everyone, and welcome to another very exciting Civilizations in Review. Uh, my name is Ben, and I'm here with Alf Zayek to chat about the Menaean Empire, a very fascinating period of Yemeni history. We have a phenomenal content writer and fellow, David Hamilton, with us to chat about this incredible empire. Thank you again, uh, David, for all your work in researching and producing this great piece of knowledge. And with me is our uh, co-moderator extraordinaire, Andy, um, to chat even more about uh, <laughs> this great empire with us. Thanks for tuning in with us live on Facebook. We're also going to be publishing and posting this everywhere else to our YouTube, our Spotify, our website, our Instagram, and more. So you can engage with this really great content and even read along with our website as we will be doing during this live stream. Uh, I'm excited to jump in and learn a lot more. I just know that they're Yemeni and pretty powerful. So <laughs> can't wait to dive even deeper. And uh, I'll throw it to Andy to read the 101 word intro. Thanks all, let's, let's do this. Thank you. So the one on word, word intro is going to be my first introduction to the Manaeans. Um, I guess with the exception of the lore that surrounds them and oh, that might be a different group of people. I'm going to stop. The intro for the one on one says the Manaeans were the inhabitants of the kingdom of Ma'in, located in the northwest of Yemen. Despite much being written about Ma'in's neighboring kingdoms of Sabian, Kataban, and Hadramaut, relatively little is known about the Manaeans. In fact, the dates of Maine existence are still debated. Although there is proof of kingdom, although there is proof the kingdom existed at least between the 8th and 2nd centuries BCE. However, this could change with archaeological sites such as the one at Barakish receiving increasing attention. At their height, the Manaeans were the masters of trade in the region, in the region, and maintained friendly relations with most of, of most other major kingdoms nearby. Reading is hard, guys. Oh my goodness! You did wonderfully. Um, it was really I, fascinating to to start that they may not have been an empire. Is a fascinating uh, <laughs> intro sentence, which I definitely want to dive into more. Um, but let's start with uh, what prompted you to choose this empire of all the ones remaining, David. Yeah, so I was just taking a look at them, um, and I personally had never heard of the Manaeans, but I saw they were in Yemen, and, you know, the Gulf states and Jordan are very interesting to me, so that was a plus, and then I noticed that there wasn't actually too much written about them that I could find, um, so I wanted to try and dig deeper and see what I could find out about them. That's fair. Um the Gulf states in Jordan is also very interesting to us as well. And I have to say, after stumbling through all those names, I applaud you on making it through the research. What was one fact that surprised you outside of like the little amount of resources that are available, which is one fact that you were like, oh, well, all right then. So I would say, um... What surprised me was it talked about their ruling system um, and how they almost had a kind of early form of semi-democracy as compared to the other kingdoms. So um, they had a king who was in charge of the legislature, but they also had a council of representatives that would help legislate as well. Um, and all the social classes were, were represented in that rather than one dominating over the others or one family dominating over the others, which was common in the Kataban, Saba, Saba and the Hadramat um, empires. Yeah, I, that is interesting. Hmm. Like reading through the ruling system as you brought it up, I'm like, huh, that sounds much better than the democracy we have going on now. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, that is great. So I heard you stumble a little bit, sorry, over some of the words. What were some of the most interesting words that you like had to kind of figure out how to pronounce? As someone who just read the one-on-one and tripped 50 times, I'm just curious if I was the only one or if we're in this together. No, it was, I definitely struggled with some of them. Like, um, you know, the difference between Minoan and then Minoan. Minoan is also very close together. Um, yeah, um, so the, figuring out the difference between that and even in the research, when you are looking up articles, when you type in Manaean, um, it'll auto-correct to Minoan. 
because a lot more is written about that than the Manet. And so you kind of had to sort out the articles based on that. So that was a bit challenging. Um, and then just pronunciation wise, the Hadramatic or like Hadramatic, I, I still struggle a little bit on that, but yeah, that was also very, one of the bigger challenges, pronunciation. Yeah. Okay, thank you for making that clear um, because I was definitely thinking of the Minotaur when I saw Manan, that is exactly where I went to. And I was like, this feels like the wrong geographical area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when I was first picking out the civilization, I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, is it this one? Like, I don't think it's in the same region, but yeah. yeah. So for all of our listeners, uh, the Minoan Empire is an ancient Greek empire in one of the many Grecian islands. The story of the Minotaur, I'm pretty certain it comes from that uh, empire or in that time frame as well. That is not on Alphuse because Greece is not a part of the Solana region, um, which is another major reason why we have the Menaeans on our site to help differentiate between the two. And um, your article, David, will help uh, people less autocorrect when they're looking about Menaeans and want to learn about Yemeni history and not get shipped off to a uh, Grecian island and an ancient half bull, half man story. So <laughs> just for clarity, two very, very, very different things. Although it is really fascinating separately because the Kotobans, which is one of the fellow Yemeni empires, their like main symbol was a bull. So there is like some uh, animalistic overlap, but two very different <laughs> empires, <laughs> just to make it very clear for all of our listeners here today. Um, <laughs> um, the ruling system stuff is fascinating and, and I definitely want to jump into it more, but I'm more curious, as I sort of mentioned in the uh, intro of your intro, when you said the Menanes may not have existed and just lived in the city. Um, do you have any more like pieces of info about that? That's such an interesting uh, statement to, I want to unpack a little bit more. Yeah, so um, in the early days, from what I found, they were potentially part of the um, Saba, Sabayan empire or kingdom. Um, before they were able to likely break away around the 8th, 8th century. Um, the, they were first talked about in Sabaean texts um, before they actually became a kingdom on their own, in their own right. So that's why um, that idea is put forth. But once they did break away, it was more of a city-state than a kingdom to begin with until they um, allied with the Yathil tribe um, they didn't really have any other territory except the main city that they occupied. So once they allied with the Yathil tribe, they began to slowly expand and take control of the trade routes throughout the region. And through that, they were able to um, politically and economically expand throughout um, Yemen, the Arabian Peninsula, and even throughout the Middle East region as a whole. Now, yeah, I'm now more excited about these archaeological sites and like what they pick up mm -hmm. and what they pick up that to, to David's point, you know, the Benin Empire or kingdom, city state is not that well known. So have artifacts of theirs been found, but attributed to someone else because of the lack of historical um, like written evidence or documented evidence of their influence and of their city-state. That's an interesting point too because um, from what I found their language and writing system was pretty similar to especially the Sabaeans because you know as I mentioned they were likely part of the Sabaean empire before they became independent um, and also there are a lot of um, Manaic texts that have been found throughout the region in Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and as far as Egypt. Um, and then they're also right now, how I mentioned they um, allied with the Yaphil tribe. There's, it's now Barakish and um, they have a archeological program going on right now where they're um, digging out the old city walls and uncovering different inscriptions that were written on the walls. And th so through a lot of these inscriptions um, is how they've been able to find out the history and the culture of the Minoan Empire Kingdom. That's so fascinating. Um, wow. Yeah, I'm just taking a second to process all of this. The the 
will they, won't they, but were they an empire kind of like thought here? I'm, I'm really stuck on this because that's just such a, an interesting space. I mean, clearly there are archaeological remains, but were the Mayans just like, you know, the emissaries of the city or their own, the, the, that is just such a fascinating question to me that maybe you don't have any more pieces on and I'm over harping on it, but I just think it's so interesting. Um, it, do you have any other <laughs> reactions to that? So like a lot of the articles that I read, they kind of considered that more of like a mercantile collection of city state. States, interesting. Okay, cool. Um, where they influenced, they had strong influence within the cities and trading posts themselves. Then within the areas those cities and trading posts, they didn't exert all that much influence. Okay, so actually this question is for you, Ben, because you and Megan, you know, you guys found, or as far as I'm concerned, like you guys found the base and then sent off our fellows and content writers to do more research. So how did you find, or Megan, find the Manan Empire to pass it off to somebody else? What was your entry point? Great question. Um, I just sort of went down all of the rabbit holes of ancient empires in X part of the world. And so when I got to Yemen, um, um, Yemen's Yemen. historical you know, empire in, in space, uh, the Manans was very clearly you know, displayed as one of the several major Yemeni empires. Um, several of them have been po published and so a couple are, are being waiting to. So if you're interested to join our team, please uh, do so. There's a couple of Manan ones. But the way that I specifically got connected is actually the image of the Manan Empire. So if you go to the Alphuzaic Manan uh, article and scroll to the very bottom where all the hyperlinks are, there's a little link of where the image comes from. Um, and this is a website um, that is a like, archaeological treasure trove of Yemeni empires. So it's not just Manan, it's like oh, all wow. of them. And every single one of them is on our site. Some have been finished, some again are yet to be. Um, but that's how I was originally connected to them was the ways they sort of found and collected the names for the 87 empires we have was largely through the archaeological sites like this. And what I'm really grateful for, for this website, um, it's dasi.cnr.it or the Digital Archive for the Study of Pre-Islamic Arabian Inscriptions from an Italian archaeological site. <laughs> uh, got some, again, I went down the rabbit hole of really, really cool spaces to learn and engage with uh, ancient Mina Swana communities. Yeah. And this website specifically is uh, a really, really great resource um, for Yemen and, and other parts of the, re the MENA region. Yeah, I clicked on it and I have to say, I appreciate the uh, title of the page, which is the Corpus of Marginal Manaic Inscriptions. <laughs> it's it's, it's like, some pretty great, uh, pretty great stuff. Awesome. So yeah, the, the Hadramak, the Katabanic, Sabaeens, um, uh, and more are all, those are specifically Yemeni all around the same time. If you kind of divide Yemen into fourths, more or less, those were the big four, um, you know, in the BCE timeframe. But yeah, this this website is uh, it's where I first got connected to Manan and, and used the photo since it's where I first was uh, connected to it. Yeah, that is really cool. <laughs> yeah, and um, three of those four have been done. So we're still waiting on the Sabaeens, but Hadramaut and Katabain are uh, both finished as well. So you can learn nice. even more about them. So David, did you use that website in your research too? I actually didn't come across that website, oh. but... I'll have to check it out because it sounds really interesting and maybe I could learn more about the culture and the inscriptions that I came across and heard about in the other research that I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love See, it. yeah it's the rabbit hole. It's <laughs> the fun rabbit holes for sure when we talk about ancient empires. Absolutely. Um, cool. <laughs> Thanks for the question. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little about Barakish as well or, or Yathil as it sometimes was known. Um, that's a modern ar like archaeological excavation site in Yemen. Is that, that's right, David, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, A, what, what you know about it, but also B, has um, it still continued to be an excavation site or is that sort of on pause given everything else going on in Yemen? I'm curious the like, modern impact of discovering this ancient empire, if you happen to know any details of that. Yeah, so um, like I said, it's the city of the Yathil tribe. It wasn't part of the Minoan Empire until they um, allied together. Um, they're uncovering the city walls and uncovering different monuments that were there within the city. 
Um, it was actually very popular for its um, big walls that were meant to protect it. And I believe they, um, at, a, at a certain time, had their capital city as Yako. Um, I can't remember exactly when the report said that the excavations had started. I think it was in probably the 2010s, somewhere around there. Um, I wasn't able to see if it has continued despite the current conflicts going on there. That's fair. Um, like I'm torn. A part of me wants it to be this thing that was left to the side and forgotten because in conflict, often historical um, items of historical relevance are destroyed in the attempt to destroy a culture as we saw in Syria and Lebanon and other places. But then another part of me is like, maybe they just weren't paying attention to the archeologists who are playing in dirt and they're still over there playing in dirt, just burying their heads in the sand, trying their best to keep living despite what's happening around them. Absolutely. Um, I would love to see more come out of there um, and see like the full complete walls of the city because the way they've been described sounds really amazing. Yeah, I'm just looking at a couple images right now uh, of Barrakesh specifically. And they're, again, th this is, you know, 2000 plus years ago and to still have things this intact and, you know, built by no technological connections that we have now for modern building. That's so, so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I clicked that button just to see what it would do, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm in love with this. And a question that I have that I also have about like more modern cities, right? Um, what in the foolery? Sorry, let me, um, someone was just speaking downstairs and it was really loud. But, uh, but like Philly had this thing a couple of summers ago when I was working where they dug up the street to remove the old, um, tracks, the old uh, trolley tracks that were there. And it was like a solid foot of built up concrete and things. And so in my mind, I wonder how do we get to a place where these walls are covered in the first place, right? If these walls are 10, 15 feet high, what in the world are we covering them with that we have to go back and dig so deep to, to get the full picture again? And that might be a question for an archaeologist or you know, someone who's more well-versed in um, rediscovering spaces, but also, you know, eons. But that, that is something that I've always been curious about. Like, how do we cover up history in the first place? That is a really interesting question, though. Like, even in Egypt and all those other places in the Middle East, like you have to really dig down to try and find the various tombs and different places, monuments different places yeah it is it is such an interesting thing yeah I, I i my thought is like are these ancient cities like sinking is that how things are covered i I've, I've always been really curious about that too like i can understand like they buried their pottery or something sure but you know these super mega tall walls the hey Archaeologists out there in our community, please answer this question for us. We, we'd love to know. <laughs> I mean, they uh, may not know, but... Hey, who, uh, someone would. That's wild. No, that's really interesting about, about Barrakesh. And, you know, hopefully it is still being uh, yeah. focused on to be excavated. I, I would love to learn more about the Menean community. Um, fascinating. Uh, another part of the opening piece I found really fascinating is that the uh, Minaeans were like friendly with the rest of the neighbors around them. Um, that's also kind of rare for a lot of ancient empires. Usually they're warring or conquesting or, you know, land grabbing or whatnot. So uh, do you have any more like details on were they just very trade focused or, you know, anything else in your research you uncovered? Yeah, no, um, I found that very interesting too, how they were able to become friends with pretty, almost every other major empire except for Saba. Um, so they would trade with Egypt, they would trade with Greece, they would trade with Phoenicia, Mesopotamia, Palestine. Um, and they all just kind of relied on them to 
you know, export their frankincense and myrrh throughout the Middle East and throughout the world, I guess. Um, like I said, though, the one exception to that would be um, Saba, who they were eventually, who they eventually broke away from, like I said before. Um, so the Sabaeans and the Manaeans would often compete for control um, of these trade routes. So sometimes there would be small skirmishes or um, caravan attacks that occurred along them. But um, the Manaeans were able to actually stay in control for a few centuries before they suddenly disappeared. Um, that's another interesting thing about them. A lot of people say they just disappear all of a sudden. They just stopped finding texts from them. Um, mentions of them suddenly just stopped. Um, from what I can find though, uh, Saba and the Kataban empires kind of took control of different cities and trading posts of them. But um, for at least a period of maybe a century or so afterwards, there was a prominent Menean family that still did control the um, trade routes from the Kataban capital. Yeah, I mean, that is ridiculously interesting because one, that happens so often in history that empires or powerful folks just disappear from texts and records. But two, when looking at the economic section of the Menean 101, it speaks to the point that you and Ben made about their friendliness with everybody, but it also speaks a little bit to how vulnerable they are, or they were, to conflicts between other states. Um, specifically in the economic section, it mentions Egypt and the Seleucids. Um, and so I'm wondering if that could have had anything to do with contributing not only to their decline, but also to their disappearance. That would be very interesting to look up. I know um, the Egypt versus Seleucids, it only said for a period of a few years, and they were able to, you know, bounce back after that. But um, it would be interesting to go back and look at the around second century, I believe, when they really started to disappear and drop off and see if there was any major conflict in the region that could have affected yeah. that. It's normally your neighbors <laughs> that do something. That's so fascinating, especially, again, 2,000 years ago, and people know that there was a skirmish between the Egyptians and the Seleucids for like five, six years, and then things went back to normal. The fact that we even know that, um, obviously there were inscriptions and you know Egyptian and Seleucid ruins in each other's places, but still yeah. it's such an interesting insight and, and window to the past communities. I, I know that's not Manan specifically, but that just so intrigues me. And that's why I'm so excited to have this civilizations uh, 101 section yeah. close to done. So we can have these cool conversations and have these interconnections uh, more focused. So. Thank yeah. you for including that in yours, David. That just, uh, adds more to this fascinating tapestry that is the ancient empires of the Mino Swana region. It builds a fuller picture. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, it was very interesting um, going through and seeing just how connected they were to every other empire. Like you couldn't study the Manaeans without learning at least a little bit of all the other major empires that were around during that same time. I love that. Very cool. Yeah. And I think what's also really fascinating is, is uh, this empire existed right at uh, zero common era and three of the most infamous gifts that happened at that year were frankincense, myrrh, and smart. gold. Uh, so it's, it's highly likely that the three wise men might have been a Sabaean, uh, Menean, Hadramatic, Katabanian, maybe one of these empires may have been the uh, gift givers given especially their extensive trade routes could have happened. I don't know, but that's a really fascinating thing to explore that I, I, you've mentioned frankincense and myrrh often throughout this article and those trees only grow in Yemen and Oman anyways. Um, for those that may not know, frankincense and myrrh are both tree sap from two different trees that um, smells really lovely for perfume or you can burn it as incense or a whole bunch of other great stuff um, that they're used for. So it's highly likely that there is a, a Yemeni connection to um, the events that happened in the zero common era <laughs> here. Very, very yeah. interesting separately. That's something I was going to mention where um, I think they said the Hadramats were the only ones who had controlled the land where you could actually grow frankincense. So it would have had to come from there. Like, well, and the Menean trade routes all throughout, maybe they capitalized on and yeah. 
<laughs> and thus it was written. Um, who knows? I just don't know if it was separately. <laughs> um, you know, because actually didn't transport it themselves. They just um, kind of contracted it out to the Menaean. <laughs> the Menaeans are independent contractors. Love that. Okay. <laughs> I think we could end there. That's so funny. <laughs> Um, interesting that the Hadramauts had the uh, the land control. It's highly likely that then they were the uh, the three tribal leaders, maybe that were then translated as kings down the road. Who knows? Or maybe they were kings. Yeah. So much cool things to uncover, and we will get to that at another uh, live stream. Just something I think is a, a cool little tidbit of history to to play with uh, as we wrap up. Um, David, any other final things about the names you'd like to share with us? Thank you so much for such insight uh, in your article today. It's been fascinating to learn much more. Nothing final. Um, I guess I just like to keep researching more and you know explore some of the questions that you guys asked that I didn't come across in my initial research, but would definitely be interesting to look more into. And you Manan can absolutely write a, uh, another Manan article after this 101 if you want to answer some questions down the road. We'd be happy to take those. Yeah. <laughs> Manan 102. Hey. It's just courses just keep stepping it up fine by me let's do it let's do it incredible well thank you so much david for all your research in this and your incredible eloquence in chatting about this empire kingdom um what a fascinating space yeah a round of applause thank you andy <laughs> um and thank you andy for uh being here today <laughs> and, and showcasing uh all of the great skills you have in connecting to this empire i, I love co-moderating with you and thank you, audience member, for listening to us. Um, I hope you are inspired to help finish out our Yemeni empires. We have a couple left to be written about. So join our team. Everything is at, at alfusaic.net. That's A-L-F-U-S-A-I-C dot N-E-T. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And uh, go learn much more about the Manaeans with an A, not an O as the Minoans. <laughs> <laughs> Minoans are great too, but just not Middle Eastern. No, it's Anyways, too late. Thank we you again, David, you. for this great article. And uh, go check it out. Alfusaic.net, Manan 101. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.